Welcome back to the Balance Bully Podcast for ambitious women in business and a few brave men. I'm your host, Nikita Renthikpen. Always excited to be in the place with you. All right, so here is part two. We just wrapped up talking about professional breakups. And now let's deal with those BFF breakups. Now they might not be true best friends. Many of us, um, me included, are well over 40 years old. (laughs) Some of you are closer to your 30s. Some of you are closer to your 60s based on the emails and the DMs that I get about the show. So I know you may not necessarily call people your best friends, but you might categorize them as close relationship, close friends, people that you would invite to very intimate uh, ceremonies, celebrations, graduation parties for you or your kids, all those kind of things. So I'm talking about that level of friendship. If you are listening to the last episode, we use the kind of analogy of your heart, your being, being an estate or a mansion, which starts with, you know, obviously the neighborhood of where your estate lives. Then there's the gate that leads to your estate. You open up the gate and you have a winding road with a beautiful grass pathway, a little parking lot before you even get to the steps of your estate, right? And then atriums, living rooms, dining rooms, breakfast rooms, all come before the kitchen, which is in this example, your most intimate space. And many of us should have a lot more people in the parking lot and even way more people out there in the ecosystem of the larger neighborhood well before they get to enter in the doors of our estate, but we don't always do that. And sometimes it comes back to bite us in the butt. So just thinking about in this regards, these are people that are somewhere between your living room and your kitchen. Not everybody's in the kitchen, but they are in your estate. They're close up and personal. You've talked about your relationships with your significant other with them, most likely. You know, you've shared stories about your kids or grandkids or not having kids and your choices that came with that. You've had deep conversations about this. This wasn't just kind of very superficial statements of, you know, I, I just chose not to, but you actually gave in to some explanations when it came to different aspects of your life. Not because you felt necessarily like you had to, but just in the the nature of sharing. This is what you wanted to do. You consider these people friends. Um, They're moved beyond associates as far as you're concerned, right? So that's why I'm kind of uh, giving them the umbrella of BFF. So now that we've established the level of friendship that we're talking, let's talk about the breakup. You know, of course, there's the context of why you need to break up. We're just going to assume for the cleanness of these examples, that no one has been put in physical harm, that no one was being emotionally abused, that no one was being verbally abused, that no one was being financially abused, and that there was nothing severely toxic that was happening. That's a whole nother level of breakup that deserves way more energy than what we're going to you know, have in the context of this conversation. And if you guys want to talk about that when it's heavily toxic, just send me an email or DM about it and we'll definitely do an episode around it. But in this part, these are relationships that have become stale. Um, perhaps even relationships that seem like they were skewing into an imbalanced state where you felt like it was becoming way more about the other person, that they were reaching out only when they needed or wanted something from you. There there hasn't been very much space for you to share. And when you do share, it's because you feel like you're being interviewed by them, that they're digging for information for some reason and not necessarily from a space of just like, hey, I want to, I really want to catch up and know what's going on in your world. I want to support you in that I'm listening to see not only just to hold space for you, but to see how I can support you as well as us just kind of sharing our relatability factors, like what's going on with us that are still in the same boat with each other. Because I met you 20 years ago when we might have been in school together, when we were working at a specific job, where we were in close proximity, we had a lot more in common then. Maybe now it's not so much. And that's okay, right? Reason, season, lifetime, all of that. But sometimes we feel like we just have to hold on to people um, from for scarcity. 
there's uh, there's safety, there's scarcity, and there's rejection. Those are usually the three main reasons that we do or don't do something, which kind of high level umbrella under fear, right? You move out of love or you move out of fear. And those that SSR, that safety, security, rejection factor, all sit right under the booty seat of fear that a lot of us do or don't do something for. So when we're having these relationships with people that we feel like, like I said, are just stale or we we just really don't have that much in common. They call our phone and we're kind of looking at it like, oh, <laughs> do I want to talk to this person? If we receive a, a text message, a DM, a Facebook message, anything like that, we're not necessarily excited to see it. We're not like looking forward to catch up with these people. We feel like their energy kind of drags us. And again, this is separate from the people who are overly passive aggressive, who are condescending who absolutely don't deserve any more of your energy. Like that's a whole different one and happy to have eviction notice because that's that's the level. That's just not break up. That's eviction notice um, with sheriff outside. So not 30 day notice either. <laughs> like that's, that's a whole different level, but just coming into this kind of staleness conversation. When that's happening, the process is really similar to the professional breakup that we talked about, where you have to recognize and be aware of why you were originally attracted to this person in the, in the first place. But the caveat here is looking at, and what does it look like now? Like maybe I was at, when we were younger, you know, in our 20s and our 30s, wherever the stage was, I was really attracted to your spunkiness, to your energy, to the way that you, you know, would tell it like it is, you know, that raw personality that so many of us would say, like, I like my friends to be real and raw. Well, as you age, you want them to be authentic and transparent. And the rawness needs a little bit of a filter of context because that friend that would just walk up to anybody and tell it like it is that I thought was really cool in my 20s. Well, now when I'm around my stakeholders, my business partners, my man, right? Like my 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 growing kids that are much more aware of the words that we're using, of the things that we're doing. I don't necessarily want that friend to still have that same level of energy when she walks into a room and just tells it like it is. I want her to like see where you are, check the temperature, like what kind of language can you use here? Because not everybody in this room should be privy to that level of rawness. And I want you to respect me enough to understand that, that what we would do in our 20s and you would just walk up and say, hey, she like you, she want to date you, you know, and just kind of be so assertive, nearing, aggressive. That's not the energy that I would want if I have business partners in a room and you happen to come in to meet me for lunch or we just happen to be in the same space. I don't want you to be like, hey, do business with her. Like she's a good person <laughs> in, in such an aggressive way. There's a way to to say things and do things. And I'm not even talking from the context of Lord, that trope of, you know, code switching, because that's a whole nother level. Where it's 2024. Cold switching, I wish could just be dead and could be gone and everyone could be authentic and transparent and speak from their heart in the language and accents and acronyms and all the things that we do. However, that's not the reality because there's so many cultural and community contexts that people are just not aware of. With that said, is it's not so much about cold switching now, it's just knowing the room, be able to read the room. If I'm sitting in the room with uh, a bunch of millionaires and billionaires that don't have uh, familiarity with the Philadelphia version of Nikita that can speak a certain way, can say a certain thing, or it can just simply give you a look. I might have to educate them with more words or with more meaning behind what's happening in that moment because they may not get it from the context of someone who might have grown up in the streets of Philadelphia with me and just understand understand that some things are simply understood and that you don't have to, you know, go into the underbelly of everything with a verbal context or, you know, confirmation of what's really happening inside your minds. And if you are thinking about your closest friend where y'all can just look at each other and it's clearly understood what's happening in that moment, you don't have to say anything. She know that you're about to cut somebody and you know that she gonna have your back all from a look. That's what I mean. But not everybody comes from that space and understands. So you might have to actually say, I need you to bring it down two points, right? <laughs> like you might have to actually, you know, lean into that energy with a little explanation. 
So with that said, and kind of setting up the context of the type of friendships that we're talking about, I want you to really look at why you attracted them. Like, what did you need? What did you want out of the relationship? What you thought was so good? And then where are you now? And what do you need? And what do you want? Because you've arrived at so many different points in your life. You've evolved in so many ways, I hope. And if you are doing your personal growth work, you also expand it. So some of those things just don't jive with you anymore. And that's okay. Maybe when you were younger, and when I say younger, you know, little context here, I'm not talking about in your teens and tweens, although some of your relationships might go back 40, 50, 30 plus years, whatever. But when you were in your initial courting stages of meeting this person, you might have really appreciated that y'all could talk for hours on the phone about a thousand different subjects from music to while you were cooking to while you were doing different things and y'all could jump around conversations. Well, now, and this level of your life at this stage in your career or your business and or business, you don't have hours <laughs> to be sitting on the phone on a regular basis. Most of us will make room for those people that we have at the kitchen table and have deeper conversations. That's where we save our bandwidth for. Might even be from the living room through the kitchen, depending on how the nature of those relationships are and when they are in consistent reciprocity, they're not transactional, neither one of you in the context of a pair are looking for each other to fix each other. We're not trying to access your IP as a friend when we know very well, because you know we do have to normalize paying our friends, okay? We know very well that we could come through that other door if we truly wanted your eyes on something professionally, or we would at least give credit to that and still create a recommendation or reference And on whatever platform we want, we would still create a testimonial, even if we didn't pay for that, because the friend might have said, like, don't pay for that. So I'm not talking about from that perspective. I just mean in general, when you think about how precious your 168 hours a week are, because everybody has the same amount of time. We all utilize it different. And if you have a friend who feels frustrated that on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, multiple times on Saturday and lean it into the next week, you're just not available for these long conversations. And caveat, there's nothing happening. There's nothing major. So if you, if you were talking about you know, something urgent happening in someone's life. There's a huge transition, a major divorce, someone's moving urgently, someone's child or or themselves are in the hospital. That's a different situation. You're obviously, as a friend, going to give more energy and time and resource to your friend in that specific valley uh, stage. I was going to say moment, but stage that they're in right now while they're in that season. But I'm talking, none of that is really happening. Like, yes, they're sharing some challenges at work, some problems with a coworker or a client or a team member or a vendor or whatever the case is. Yes, they're sharing some issues with uh, someone they're dating or their forever lover or, you know, different stages that are kids and all that. But that's not an urgent issue. Those are just things where life is lifening, right? Like those things are just happening. We all have some of those things happening at some point, even if our seasons aren't matching up and I'm having an urgent season while you're also in an urgent season, which I hope isn't happening because we could better support each other if we're not both in a high adrenaline state and a high stress state all the time. So we've established that we're not necessarily feeling this person anymore. They're not matching the version of who we are right now. We're probably also not matching that version, but we're just holding on to, oh, I've known them for 10 years. I've known them for 20 years. There wasn't any major incident. Well, also look at, is there any reciprocity? Because if you feel like I've just changed and I've just shifted, they've done nothing wrong, okay, that's that's fair and that's fine. That may not be breakup worthy. That might just need some communication intimacy where you got guys have to be deliberate and create some moments to kind of re-engage with each other, to get to know each other at the age and stage of life that you're in right now. So that's that's fair. That's different. That's just a re-looking at where we could reconnect and get a little bit more intimate, learn like, oh, you used to listen to 
you know, classical music. Now you're more into hip hop or whatever, like get to know that person again. But let's assume that that isn't the case. You've done all those things and you're just like, you know, I'm not interested. There's something about it. I don't feel like what I share is safe. I, um, you know, I have reason to believe that many of the things are being shared with their other BFF, right? Their other friend. I have reason to believe that when I'm saying something to them, they are dismissing it because of the way that they talk to me, that they respond to me, the way that they seem like they're not catching what I'm saying. I'm thinking of someone in particular that I've known for a really, really long time. And I remember having to have a come to Jesus moment with her where I said, you know, a lot of stuff that I say sometimes just seems to miss it. And you skip right over it as if I didn't just say something deep. Um, Also, I felt like many times they were interviewing me and not actually exchanging with me. And so because I love this person, I was able to address it and they were able to course correct. They were, oh, I didn't know. And to be fair, they were also in a high stress state. So there was a lot of them that wasn't fully present, not because of me, not because they didn't want to be, but just because they were having some other, you know, external issues that really was consuming. And instead of dealing with them, they were compartmentalizing by trying to focus on me and some of the other people in their lives, which wasn't working. And We've all done it. First partaker, I've done it too, where I'm just like, I don't want to deal with real life right now. How can I help you? Well, yes, the oxytocin from helping other people is very supportive. However, that's not the only thing you need. You need some space and grace to be able to handle what's really happening in your life too, or else you're only superficially showing up for the people that you love and that you want to be in you know, a supportive hold for. That's not fair to them. Because once you get through that moment of eating up that oxytocin for helping, 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 giving, giving, giving as a way to medicate for the pain from the pain that you're feeling from not dealing with your own real life and own real issues, one, you weren't really fully present for them. And some part of them felt that, but maybe they were desperate enough to be like, I don't care. I just, you know, I just need some help. But eventually it all catches up. And you still have that pain. It's like when people go on vacation to avoid real life, like handle what you can handle. You can't control everything, but handle what you can handle so you can actually enjoy the vacation. Because otherwise you're going to leave the mess that you just left at home to escape, so so to speak, on vacation, which most of us won't really do because we still have all the things rolling around in our mind of all the problems that we really should be dealing with, that we could be dealing with, that we don't want to deal with while we're supposed to be enjoying this vacation. And then we still come right back to the mess anyway. And you just paid all this money and used up your PPO or your PTO or your PPL, whatever you want to call it, to be able to quote unquote escape only to you know come back to the same issues. And we do that in relationships too. So just be really mindful to not do that. It's better for you to, now we circle back to the previous episode when we were talking about professional um, breakups, is when you are considerate and concise and you cut. So be considerate. Be considerate to that friend. Listen, again, again, this is a stale relationship. We're just not matching each other anymore. We've already done the deliberate things to try to see if we could reconnect and it's just not working. Be considerate. I love you so much. I'm always going to pray for you if if you're someone who is a praying person or grounded in spirituality. I'm always going to root for you, cheerlead for you. And We really don't have to keep having these conversations where we're just kind of filling space because it doesn't feel really supportive. I just feel like I'm leaning into explaining and trying to convince you of my availability and my accessibility when that's not really what I want. I don't feel that we're as connected as we used to be. And that's okay. I think we've just kind of grown into other versions of ourselves, not I've outgrown you because then you're projecting. It's we've grown into different versions of ourselves. And again, you can't help how someone feels about the way that you cut. (laughs) You can't, there's nothing you can do about that. All you can do is lead with love. It's love and action. Be compassionate. Kindness literally is compassion and action. You're not trying to project. You're not trying to be aggressive. You're not trying to say, well, you do this and you don't do this and this, this, that, you, 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 and pointing. It's very simple. We've outgrown that older version of ourselves. And I just feel like we're in different stages. With that said, 
I still love you and I support you and I wish you well in life. It really can be that clean of a cut. Now that person, because you love them, you may give them space to share their feedback and how they feel about it and all that. That does not have to go on for hours and hours and hours. That really can be a roughly five to eight minute you know, kind of moment, like I hear you, I hear everything and really listen, I hear everything you're saying. I hear you saying you love me. I hear you saying you're confused. I hear you saying you don't understand. And all of that is okay. I don't want to convince you of my feelings. I just wanted to convey to you because we convey, not convince in business, boardroom, bedroom, and everything in between, right? I just wanted to convey to you where I'm at and Because we are adults, because I love you, I don't want this to turn into something that creates a lot of angst between us. Again, it's okay that you don't understand it. This is just where I'm at and leave it at that. Now, as a side, 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 if this is someone, and again, we could do a whole episode on this if you want it. If this is someone who has been completely passive aggressive, who has been condescending, who has been nice, nasty, and I'm sure you know what I mean, where they give you compliments with shade. They always in certain things. They want to constantly fix you, tell you that, you know, your hair, your outfit, your makeup, your shoes, your gym routine, your diet, your whatever could be so much different, so much better if you would just listen to them with their expertise and whatever. And this is not even their profession, but this is what they keep trying to project on you to mold you and change you into who they want you to be for them. They want you to play small and then at the same time will gaslight you to try to say, why are you playing small? But they keep trying to belittle you, make you small in some kind of way. Now, if that's the person you're dealing with, the shortest note that I will make here without turning this into a whole long episode about it is that you you still want to be who you are. You still want to be considerate, concise, and cut. But that doesn't take a one-on-one conversation. That is literally, you. if you choose, you can write a write a note, a text. You can send a, vo- a voice note. It really can be that simple. Please delete me from your context. Move on <laughs> with your life. Do not reach out. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Like you re- and again, you don't have to be angry. I'm being a little bit sarcastic with that. But you don't have to give them more time if you felt like you've done all the things. Now, this is with the context of hopefully you have been checking them along the way when things weren't in alignment with your friendship style, that it wasn't a big surprise that all of a sudden, if you were like, nope, I actually was telling like that doesn't work for me. Not sure what you meant by that. Not sure why we're taking it this way. You know, like if you had been kind of nudging in the right way and they just seemed to not be getting it because they needed you to be angry and you're not trying to be knocked off your square, that's different. And then you got to the point where you're like, you know what? I sat on it. I thought about it. I prayed about it. This is over. Then go ahead and send the voice note. Go ahead and send the text message. I have ended 25 plus year conversations very simply. This is not working for me. Love you. Love your family. Wish you the best. Always really met every kind word I've ever said about you. And I all, and in parentheses, I also mean this. Kick rocks barefoot on broken glass. Like meant that. And have no apologies about it. Sometimes people really do push you to that point. And again, I didn't threaten anybody. I didn't, you know, have to come out of my come out of my skin, come off my square. Would be happy to have a conversation with you if I thought it would actually resolve. But because I know that I've been nudging and trying to, you know, gently but firmly considerate and concise, have these firm conversations with you and you weren't catching it because you use those moments to gaslight, gaslight and be condescending and passive aggressive, it's not worth it. It's a courtesy that I'm spending the 32 seconds or whatever it is to even send you that releasing message, which is what I consider it. Let me release you. That's the eviction notice. Let, let me release you. You can listen to this message as many times as you want to. You can blast it on air and show everybody what I said to you. I really don't care because I said everything with love. Even when I was hurt, even when I was upset, even when I was at my tippy top, I still said it with love. Go, go with love. Go away from me period. So I hope that was supportive and helpful from the 
professional breakup that we talked about last episode to the personal breakups with your kind of proverbial BFF, your close relationship, your close friend that just doesn't deserve your space anymore, that it was a staled relationship. There was no major incident, but you've grown into different versions of yourself all the way through the little touch point that we did where you're dealing with someone who clearly is toxic, that you're just over, you're done. You've let it slide long enough. And energetically, even if they don't have proximity to you, but energetically, you just don't want them attached to you anymore. You don't want any misconceptions. You don't want any more birthday invitations. You don't want any more, hey, girl, hey, friend, hey, bro. I just want to catch up real quick. You know, all of that. You're just over it. Go ahead. Consider it concise and cut with love. All right. As always, I ask for two things on the BBP. Please think of someone in your ecosystem that could benefit from hearing this episode or the last couple episodes and share the show with them. I prefer you share the direct episode so it's not overwhelming because we have 200 plus episodes if you share the show completely, unless it's someone that's a podcast head like I am. But if that's not their jam, just go ahead and share this one episode with them without a lot of context. Hey, heard this. It was dope. Thought of you. Check it out. Something as simple as that without kind of projecting your opinion on it beyond the fact that it really is a dope show. Um, But go ahead and share that. And then the second thing I want you to do, as always, is go enjoy the balance of your day. But remember, do it both.